Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss carcinoma stomach. So carcinoma stomach has been described as one of the captains of man's death. The incidence of carcinoma stomach is uh, variable throughout the world. It is more common in Japan and the prevalence is 70 cases per 1 lakh population. Japan has adopted a screening program based on endoscopy and this has resulted in the early detection and better therapeutic result. It's common in male with a male-female ratio of 2 is to 1. There is a decreased incidence of uh, distal gastric cancer worldwide, whereas there appears to be an increase in the incidence of uh, proximal gastric cancer, particularly of the gastroesophageal junction. Carcinoma of the distal stomach and the body of the stomach is uh, more seen in low socioeconomic groups, whereas proximal gastric cancer affects higher socioeconomic groups. Proximal gastric cancer does not seem to be associated with uh, H. pylori infection. On the other hand, distal gastric cancers have association with H. pylori infection. Regarding etiology, it is multifactorial. So we have uh, acquired factors, we have genetic factors, we have uh, uh, protective factors, we have uh, precursor uh, lesions. So regarding acquired factors, it includes high salt diet, high nitrate diet, smoky food, Food low in vitamin A and C, smoking, Helicobacter pylori, uh, Epstein Barr virus, radiation exposure, previous uh, gastric surgery, coal or rubber workers. So, H. pylori is um, important, although its importance is uh, disputed. H. pylori seems to be principally associated with carcinoma of the body of the stomach and the distal stomach rather than the proximal stomach. As uh, Helicobacter is associated with uh, gastritis, gastric atrophy, and intestinal metaplasia, the association with malignancy is uh, perhaps not surprising. Regarding genetic factors, so type A blood group, pernicious anemia, family history of gastric cancer, hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, leaf from any syndromes are responsible. Besides that, mutation or inactivation of uh, P53 gene, overexpression of growth factors, BCL2 gene mutation are also responsible for carcinoma stomach. Regarding protective uh, factors, so raw vegetable, citrus food or fruits, or antioxidant that is vitamin A and C, or food rich in selenium, zinc, and iron are the protective uh, factors. Regarding precursor lesions, they are adenoma, atrophic gastritis, dysplasia, intestinal metaplasia, and meniere's disease. So these are the uh, etiological factors responsible for uh, carcinoma stoma. Regarding the site of uh, involvement, the proximal stomach is now the most common site of gastric cancer worldwide, whereas high prevalence of distal gastric cancer is still seen in Japan. Regarding the incidence, so far as sites are concerned, esophagogastric junction involvement is uh, seen in around 18% of the cases. 
Involvement in the cardia is seen in 17% uh, of the cases. Body is involved in 15% of the cases. Antrum is involved in 13% of the cases. And pylorus is involved in around 7% of the cases. Regarding pathology, adenocarcinoma of the stomach arises from the mucosal cells of the stomach, more so in the antrum and the pylorus, and more frequently on the lesser curvature. So many classification exist. So we have a morphological classification which was described by Borman. So it includes type 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So type 1 lesions are uh, polypoidal lesion or fungating lesion. Type 2 are ulcerated lesion with uh, elevated borders. Type uh, 3 are ulcerated and uh, infiltrating growth, that is fungating growth. And type 4 are the diffuse infiltrating or linitis plastica. And type 5 are non-classifiable tumors. In the linitis plastica, there is extensive infiltration of the gastric wall, especially the submucosa. So, extensive fibrosis of the submucosal layer of the so there is no tumor or ulceration in the lumen and the mucosa of the stomach appears normal. So because of this extensive fibrosis of the submucosa, so we get to see mother of pearl appearance. So next classification is Lawrence classification. So it has two types. One is the intestinal or well-differentiated variety. And another one is diffuse or poorly differentiated variety. Intestinal variety, it is common in men and older patients. It arises from precancerous lesion within gastrointestinal tract, especially distal stomach. It favors uh, he uh, hematogenous or blood borne metastasis. And uh, histologically, it forms the glandular structure uh, from uh, mucosa. It is associated with H. pylori infection, at chronic atrophic gastritis, intestinal metaplasia, and dietary factors. Regarding diffuse variety, it is common in women and younger patients. It is associated with the proximal stomach and arises from lamina propria. It doesn't have a glandular formation. It spreads in uh, through submucosal infiltration, but it can have transmural extension and lymphatic invasion. And it tends to have a more peritoneal metastasis and it carries worst prognosis. Next classification is WHO classification, so which includes adenocarcinoma, tubular, mucinous variety papillary and signal cell variety. Adenocarcinoma is further divided into intestinal and diffuse variety. This is about WHO classification. Next we have the Japanese classification which uh, divides the gastric cancer into early gastric cancer and advanced gastric cancer. Early gastric cancer can be defined as cancer limited to uh, mucosa and submucosa with or without lymph node involvement, that is T1 and any N. So it has a, a type, uh, three types. We have protruding variety, superficial, and excavated. Superficial is further divided into elevated, flat, and depressed variety. So in Japan, approximately one third of the gastric cancer are diagnosed as early gastric cancer. The Probably it is because gastric cancer is very common in Japan and all the dyspeptic patients, they are referred for endoscopy at an appropriate stage and this leads to early diagnosis. Secondly, the endoscopists are familiar with the appearance of early gastric cancer and cases are not missed. So these are the reasons why uh, early diagnosis is possible in Japan.
So these are the types as I have said. Type 1 is the protruding variety. So this is the type 1 is the protruding variety. This is type 2A, 2B, 2C. 2A is the superficial elevated, so superficial flat, superficial little bit down, it's a depressed one. And this is the third variety type uh, 3, it is the excavated uh, variety. So regarding the advanced gastric cancer, they involve the muscularis. Borman classified it into four types, type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Type 1 are the polypoidal or uh, fungating uh, lesion. Type 2 are uh, ulcerated uh, uh, lesion with the uh, elevated uh, borders. Type 3 are ulcerated and infiltrating lesion, that is the fungating lesion. And type 4 is diffusely infiltrating, or we say venous plastica. So these are the different, this is the protruding, this is the ulcerative and this is ulcero proliferative and this is the diffuse variety so regarding spread so it can be a direct spread it can be lymphatic spread it can be hematogenous spread or it can be transgenomic spread so we have the direct spread so it directly it spreads through the adjacent structure so the tumor penetrates the uh, muscularis serosa and ultimately to the adjacent organs such as pancreas, colon, and liver. Regarding lymphatic spread, it spreads by both permeation and embolization to the affected tires of node. So, spread occurs through lymphatics to subpyloric, gastric, pancreatico duodenal, planic, celiac, and erotic node. So this may be extensive with uh, the tumor even appearing in the left uh, supraclavicular node, which is known as Troisius sign. So if four or more nodes are involved, the patient has a worse prognosis. The lymph node involvement is uh, directly related to the depth of tumor penetration. So regarding the lymphatic zone so which we have uh, already discussed in the uh, anatomy part so it is uh, divided into four zones zone one two three and four so regarding zone one it lies in the gastrocolic mantle along the right gastroepiploic vessel so this is the right gastroepiploic vessel this is the area of zone one and uh, from here it drains to the pyloric portion of the uh, greater curvature to the pyloric, celiac, and the erotic lymph node. And the next we have the zone 2. It lies in the gastrocolic and the gastrosplenic omentum along the left gastroepiploic vessel. So this is the area for the left gastroepiploic vessel. So draining from the upper half of the gastric curvature, a greater curvature to pancreatico splenic and the erotic lymph node. Regarding zone 3, it drains from the proximal two-thirds of the stomach and the upper lesser curvature along the left gastric artery. So this is the left gastric artery. So this is the zone 3. So it drains into the uh, perisophageal lymph nodes. And lastly, zone 4 is from the distal portion of the lesser curvature and pylorus along the hepatic artery and it drains into the para-erotic lymph nodes. So this is that region. So that ultimately drains into para-erotic lymph nodes. So next we have the hematogenous uh, or blood-borne metastasis. Blood-borne metastasis uh, occurs uh, first to liver and it's around 40 percent and subsequently it spreads to another organ which includes lung and bones. They are uncommon in the absence of a nodal disease. Next common uh, mode of spread is the transperitoneal or transgenomic spread. So once the tumor has uh, reached the serosa of the stomach, it indicates the incurability. So once serosa is breached, the malignant uh, cells spreads into the peritoneal cavity and gradually gravitates into the uh, pelvis and uh, implant onto the 
ovary or different structures. So tumor can uh, manifest uh, anywhere in the peritoneal cavity and commonly it gives rise to ascites. Advanced uh, peritoneal disease may be palpated either uh, abdominally or rectally in the pouch of Douglas as uh, tumor cell or bloomer cell. The ovaries may sometimes be the sole site of transylomic spread, which is known as Krukenberg's tumor. The tumor may spread via the abdominal cavity to the umbilicus, which is known as Sister Joseph's nodule. Transperitoneal spread of a gastric cancer can be detected most effectively by laparoscopy and cytology. So, regarding the staging of the gastric cancer, common staging in use is International Union Against Cancer Staging of Gastric Cancer. So, it involves uh, uh, three components T and M. So, T is T1, T2, T3, and T4. T1 is tumor involves lamina propria. T2 tumor invades muscularis or subserosa. T3 is a tumor involves serosa. And T4 is a tumor invades adjacent organ. Regarding N, it is N0, N1, N2, N3. N0 is no lymph node. N1 is metastasis uh, in 1 to 6 regional nodes. N2 is metastasis in 7 to 15 regional nodes. N3 is metastasis in more than 15 regional nodes. Regarding M, M is again divided into two, M0 and M1. M0 is no distant metastasis and M, M1 is distant metastasis. This includes peritoneum and distant lymph nodes. So this is about the DNM classification. Now regarding presentation, presentation can be silent presentation. So patient may present as a new dyspepsia after the age of 40. It can be insidious onset. They can present with some obstructive symptom or they can present as a lump. So asymptomatic uh, patients can present at uh, early stage of cancer or in carcinoma of the body of the trauma. Regarding new dyspepsia after the age of 40, it's the vague but persistent indigestion occurring in a patient who never had a stomach trouble previously. And this type of patient, uh, when encountered, should be investigated thoroughly to rule out gastric cancer. Next presentation is insidious onset. So especially it is seen in men. So he feels tired and weak and the three A's may be evident which are anemia, anorexia and asthenia. And most have iron deficiency anemia but few can have macrocytic anemia too. Next presentation is obstructive symptom. So if the lesion is in the cardia, in the form of uh, carcinoma cardia, patient can have a, a dysphagia. If it is a carcinoma pylorus, patient will have a fullness, belching or vomiting or sign and symptoms of gastric outlet obstruction. If uh, there is secondaries in the liver, patient may uh, present with obstructive jaundice. So these are the uh, um, obstructive symptoms. Next is the lump. So 30% of the cases present with lump in the epigastrium and rest are in different part of the uh, body. So secondaries in uh, ovaries which we have already discussed they are known as Krukenberg's uh, tumor or in the rectal cycle secondaries they are known as rumor cells or secondaries in the uh, umbilicus known as sister Joseph's nodule or uh, uh, ascites from uh, uh, carcinomatous uh, peritoneal or uh, trosial sign 
Crozier sign is palpable mass of uh, lymph node in the left supraclavicular fossa. A Crozier sign is a lebothrombosis of uh, superficial veins of the leg. So these are the uh, presentation, different presentation. Regarding investigation, investigation includes complete uh, blood count, liver function test and prothrombin time, double contrast barium in study, gastroscopy with uh, uh, 10 targeted biopsies, endosonography, chest x-ray, USG abdomen, CT scan, abdomen and thorax, FNAC of a left supraclavicular fossa if there is any lump, or diagnostic laparoscopy to stage the disease, CT PET scan to identify recurrence. So these are the investigations which uh, uh, can be required for a proper diagnosis and staging. Regarding operative management, the main management is surgical resection. Other modalities like uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy are not effective in adenocarcinoma of the stomach. So once we open the abdomen, we look for the signs of inoperability. So what are the signs of inoperability? They include fixation to the pancreas or fixation to the posterior abdominal wall or involvement of the mesentery, especially in the origin of the superior mesenteric vessel, or if there is any gross local involvement of uh, lymph nodes leading to fixity, or multiple secondaries in the liver or patient hepatitis, peritoneal seedling either locally or in the pelvis. So these are the signs of inoperability. So we have to first look for signs of inoperability. If they are uh, not present, then we should go for a proper uh, procedure. And if these are pre present, then we should abandon the uh, major procedure. What is curative resection? So curative resection, it consists of removal of a block of tissue, which includes the growth, a margin of at least four centimeter beyond its palpable limit with the stomach and stretch with lymph nodes. So that is curative resection. So we have two conditions. First, we can have a lesion of the distal two third of the stomach, or we can have a lesion in the upper third of the stomach or of the GE junction. So in a lesion of a distal two third of the stomach, the operation of choice will be subtotal gastrectomy. And for a lesion of uh, upper third of the stomach or of the GE junction, the treatment is the total gastrectomy. So it should be ensured that the resection line should be free of malignancy. Coming to total gastrectomy, so it is indicated for growth involving the upper or the middle two third of the stomach. So it is uh, better performed through a long upper midline incision. The stomach is uh, removed and blocked, and this uh, includes uh, the tissue of entire greater omentum and uh, lesser omentum, and all the lymph nodes, uh, including subpyloric, hepatic nodes nodes along the left gastric uh, artery, along the splenic artery, and all nodes at the superior aspect of the pancreas and the splenic island. So stomach along with this structure should be uh, removed as a specimen for total gastrectomy. So this is the diagrammatic representation. Here the omentectomy has been done. So this is the transverse clone. This is the omentum, greater omentum. So it is transected. Ultimately, we go into the lesser sac. So this is the posterior uh, uh, wall of the stomach. This is the pancreas. This is the uh, transverse colon. So here the uh, transaction is done in the duodenal side. It is uh, nicely repaired. Here we can see the 
uh, nodal clearance is conducted and here this is the specimen the whole stomach is uh, uh, excised along with the omentum and the lymph nodes and uh, following this G continuity is uh, or gastrointestinal continuity is maintained so gastrointestinal continuity is restored by means of a rulu rulu should be 50 cm long to avoid uh, bile reflux esophagitis so other methods of reconstruction should be discouraged because of poor functional results so this is the final um, anastomosis which is known as esophago jejunostomy ru and y anastomosis so here we don't see the stomach stomach is entire stomach is uh, transected this is the duodenal stump which is really closed and uh, here in the jejunum the transection of jejunum is done and this is the proximal portion of the jejunum and this is the this is the distal portion so the distal portion is advanced further up and it is anastomosed with the esophagus so this is the esophago jejunostomy and this uh, proximal uh, jejunum is anastomosed with this part of the jejunum that is side to or end to side jejuno jejunostomy is been done here in this procedure so this is esophago jejunostomy do and why so in general we have uh, four types of uh, resection d1 d2 d3 and d4 resection so d1 resection involves the removal of a pericastric node d2 resection involves the clearance of a node from major arterial trunk and d3 is the removal or clearance of a node from the hepatoduodenal ligament or along the mesentery or uh, uh, along the mid middle colic vessel and d4 is when all this the d1 d2 d3 are removed together this d4 when all stations are removed they are termed as d4 so next operation is subtotal gastrectomy so subtotal gastrectomy is done for carcinoma of the pyloric end of the stomach so the proximal stomach is uh, preserved and its blood supply is derived from the uh, short uh, gastric arteries proximal clearance of 5 cm proximal to the growth and distal clearance of uh, 2 cm should be obtained and uh, after removing the specimen bill road to anastomosis uh, is uh, to be performed so suppose if there is a growth here somewhere here then these are the arbitrary line of uh, uh, resection so here we can see the momentum has been uh, resected transected and see here it is mobilized the greater momentum is uh, a mobilization is done through greater momentum and the lesser momentum and ultimately that part of the stomach is mobilized for excretion so here we can see it is uh, uh, fit for excretion so here in this uh, diagram we can see a stapler is applied in the duodenal or the pyloric end and the transaction will be done there this is the growth and again proximally we apply a linear cutter stapler and uh, thereby we transect this uh, specimen site and ultimately uh, build road to anastomosis is done so this uh, proximal stomach is um, attached to a jejunum loop so this is anterior to the colonitis anticolic anastomosis and here we can see it is posterior to the colonitis known as the retrocolic uh, GJ. 
So besides surgery, we have uh, other therapies which are known as adjuvant therapy. That includes the chemotherapy, chemoradiation, and immunochemotherapy. So chemotherapy includes the FAM regime. That includes 5-FU, adriamycin, and uh, mitomycin C. Another regime commonly in use is ECF. That includes epirubicin, cisplatin, and 5-FU. The Japanese are using interperitoneal mitomycin C impregnated uh, charcoal. It is taken up by the peritoneal lymphatics and may target the gastric bed, which is the main site of rat rat. So regarding chemo radiation, post-operative radiotherapy with uh, chemotherapy using 5-FU and leucovarin is uh, given. So these may reduce the risk of local uh, recurrence approximately threefold. So radiation alone has a very less role and RT alone is mainly used as a palliative uh, mode of treatment for painful bone secondaries. Other uh, uh, chemoradiation regime are uh, doxytaxel plus either 5-FU or capistabin combined uh, with radiation for uh, surgery or cisplatin either uh, with uh, 5-FU or capacitabin combined with the radiation before surgery. So these are the regimes available. Next we have the immunochemotherapy. So immune agent uh, pisibanil is uh, used followed by 5-FU and mitomycin C. So recent advance in uh, carcinoma uh, stomach is uh, endoscopic mucosal resection. So endoscopic mucosal uh, resection or the EMR is uh, reserved for small tumors less than one centimeter diameter and with uh, mucosal involvement only. So in this uh, procedure, normal saline is injected into the base of the growth and that is into the submucosa below the lesion and the lesion is resected with the help of snares. And if the submucosa is involved, then we have to do higher operation that is the gastrectomy. So gastrectomy will be required if uh, the involvement is uh, deep to the submucosa If the involvement is only in the mucosa, then only we can do submucosal uh, endoscopic uh, mucosal resection. So for early gastric cancer, this is a useful procedure. So we have uh, palliative measures. So when we cannot do anything, so palliative measures come into play. So that includes uh, uh, palliative uh, partial uh, gastrectomy in the form of uh, bilirubin 2 a palliative uh, anterior uh, gastrojejunostomy with uh, jejunojejunal anastomosis, divine uh, exclusion procedures, MB or celestine tubes for uh, proximal uh, growth, endoscopic uh, stenting or dilatation, laser recanalization, or palliative uh, chemotherapy with the FAM regime. So these are the um, uh, options available so far as the palliation is concerned. Regarding prognosis, overall prognosis is uh, very bad. Prognosis is much better in uh, Japan as compared to the rest of the world. Probably because of the better screening, early diagnosis, aging, and a, a higher standard of surgical practice in Japan. In Japan, five year survival rate for early gastric cancer is around 70 to 90 percent of the cases. In India, it is approximately 20 percent. And regarding advanced gastric cancer, the five year survival rate in Japan is 20 to uh, 35. Thank you.